welcome back everyone in this video we'll see how we can customize our chart so currently it looks extremely boring to me I want to set it up for a dark mode let's see how we can do it so I'm going to head over to their documentation again and then inside of tutorials I'm going to head over to chart colors here I see that I have to change the HTML body background color to the chart background color that we want to set. So I'm going to head over to our CSS file and I'm going to say body is equals to background color. Our chart's background color will be this same color. So I need to import this CSS file in my code. I head over to my live site now so our background color has been changed next we'd like to change the background color of our chart and would also like to change the vertical and horizontal lines to something white so it's visible in a dark background so if we head over to their documentation we can see that inside the create chart function there on the second argument they're providing all these customization options so they have layout and they have grid so if i copy this code and head over to my code we'll see that we already have layout that we had set up on the first video so if i delete this and paste my newly copied code here I have layout and inside of layout we have background color which we have set to 222 and we also change the text color so it's visible in a dark background we also change the grid color to something off-white so it's visible in a dark background if I head over to my code now and see the result so we have a dark background set up we can also change the border color of the axis so we have two axes here x axis and y axis in lightweight charts the x axis is called the time scale and the y axis is called the price scale so let's see how we can change the border color of these axes in the documentation if we scroll below we see that Inside the chart, we have access to a method called price scale, and inside of it, we have apply options. And inside of apply options, we're passing this border color. Same for time scale. Inside of time scale, we have access to apply options, and we're passing the border color inside this apply options. So if I copy both lines and paste them in my code, and if I head over to my live website so we get an error why is that now so their example is not actually updated for version 4.0 i think in version 4.0 we need to provide a price skill id so in our case it will be right it's it's right because we set up our price skill on the right side if you set up your price scale on the left side, then you will need to provide left. That being said, our border color is now visible. So we have provided borders to each axis. Next, we have series colors. Now, I've already shown you how we can change the series colors. So inside the add series method, we pass all the related customization options that, um, that is related to that series. But we can actually do it in another way. Let's say we don't want to pass all of these inside our add series method. So what we can do is that we can say new series dot apply options. So this is another method inside of this apply options method we can provide 
all the colors that we previously passed inside the add series method. So if I paste this code, so we have weak color, up color, weak down color, down color, and border visible, just like before. So this is the same object that I passed on the add candle series method before. So if I go to my like project, our so our our chart behaves the same way, but we did change the candles color. Instead of providing these customization options as an argument to the create chart function, you can also provide them in another way. So I'm going to cut all this and then I'm going to say chart dot apply options and then inside of this apply options method I can provide all of those customization options. So it takes an object and inside of this object we have provided all the customization options that we were previously providing to the create chart function. Okay. Let's head over to our live project so it, it's functioning just like before. Now next we have the crosshair, the vertical and horizontal dashed lines that moves with my mouse cursor is called the crosshair. If we are not satisfied with the default crosshair we can customize it as well. So what if I want to make my vertical crosshair thicker? If we head over to their documentation and look inside crosshair we'll see exactly how we can do it. So inside of this crosshair property they have some additional properties. If I want to make my vertical crosshair thicker we need to provide it a property called vert line and make its width thicker. So I'm going to head over to the to my code and inside here I'm going to say crosshair and vert line. Inside of vert line I'm going to say width is equals to 5. If we head over to our code see how our crosshair has become thicker. We can also change the style from dashed to solid so we can do it by providing it a style property called lightweight charts dot line style dot solid so that will make it a solid line instead of a dashed line we have to import this line style from lightweight charts so i'm going to auto import this so from the lightweight charts library we are importing line style if we head over to our live project we'll see that our crosshairs vertical line has become solid we can also change the color of the crosshair I'm going to use the same color from their docs so as we can see our crosshair has become opaque now if we look closely to the bottom of our vertical line we can see that there is a label and uh, it's showing the time. We can also change the background color of this label. So from the docs, we can see that there is a property called label background color and we can set a color to this label background. So if I copy this code and paste it inside, we can see that our label color has changed from black to purple. We can customize the horizontal line of the crosshair the same way. So I'm just going to go to the docs and copy the customization that they have on the horizontal line. If I head over to the live site, we can see that our horizontal line has become purple as well. And we can also see that the background of the label on the horizontal line has also changed. Before ending this video, I'd like to show a few more things. One is that what if we want our chart to zoom 100% by default? We can do it by specifying chart dot timescale 
and this is a method so we need brackets and then inside of time scale method we have another method called fit content so if we head over to our code we can see that our chart now zooms in 100% by default if i refresh if i refresh it keeps its position to 100% zoom currently if we resize our browser window we can see that our chart doesn't change its size based on the browser window it's only if we refresh that is when it changes its size if we make our browser full screen we can see that it hasn't changed changed its, its size with the size of the browser window now if we refresh again only then it changes its size so we don't want this kind of functionality we want it to resize as we resize the browser window so how can we do that in our code i'm going to create a function called handle handle resize it's an arrow function and inside of this handle resize function i'm going to say chart dot apply options and inside of this i'm going to say width is equals to chart container ref dot current dot client width then i'm going to write a resize event handler so i'm going to say window dot add event listener and inside of this i'm going to say that the event is going to be resize and and inside this add event listener i'm going to pass my handle resize function as the second argument we need to clean up this event as well so on the cleanup function i'm going to say window dot remove event listener i'm going to say resize and then the function that i created if i head over to the live project and resize my browser window i can see that the chart changes its width as i change the browser window that's it for this video Thank you.